should Joe Marler have got sent off for his um Here geni- we go. Yeah. Here we go. Come on, because we've been very slow in the build-up. Well, we, we, we talked about the big game yesterday, didn't we? The Scotland game. Um, but yeah, I tweeted about it, of course. Oh, no, no, no. How many more it's followers you? off it? How but many said, more followers I would you say? I don't count followers, mate. I'm a not couple of thousand, you. though. Who, who knows? A couple of thousand. Who, who knows? <laughs> you don't count followers. Um, but it's organic. You, you sit there, and I, I, tweet, I, I, I questioned whether it should have been a yellow card at the time. It turns out he's now been cited, so the citing officer feels it was a red card decision uh, that could have been made. And um, yeah, that would have changed the game a lot, but... You're dealing the here and now. You, it didn't happen. He didn't get red carded. We've seen he's been cited. Um, and England were very dominant. So a three-point win, does it... The, the things that bother me about England's performance, nothing on the field in terms of the actual ruggers, just a bit of behavioural issues. And it starts... You always go back to it. Eddie Jones. What is he saying after the game? Saying it was 16 against 13, and then you get asked the question, what do you mean by that? He's like, work it out yourself. He's popping at the ref. You cannot say that. He's always had this rule that he wouldn't talk about refereeing decisions. So he goes from being semi-respectful over time to not really talking about referees post-match to saying the worst thing you can say, basically saying the referee was on their side cheating or whatever. It was crazy. And I actually sit back and I think there's sometimes, and we joke about on here, you talk about me being an arrogant Englishman, and I can now kind of start to see why People don't like the English. That's my point. So that's why I wanted to highlight the way that Scotland go about their business. Because, yes, we might not be the best rugby nation in the world. And, yes, we might not have star qualities littered over. And, yes, we might not have lads that bat their chest all the time. But you look at the respect in which the guys take to the field, the respect they have with the referees, uh, the respect that Hoggy's got within the team, the way that they've dealt with the Finn Russell situation, which initially I didn't agree, but you actually look at the performances now and Adam Hastings, like KV said, his performance. That's my point. Look at the way that Gregor Townsend goes about his business. So, you know, we like I, I love the crack, clearly. You know, you saw my tweets at the weekend, and I'm sure we'll get into that after, but you're right, your coach sets a precedent of how you can behave and how you encourage your players to do things. I'm all for characters coming out of the game and all them kind of things, but there are question marks in the game and it's happening more and more. There was an issue with Dan Bigger as well, the way that he was speaking to the referee. Love Dan Bigger, amazing player. Um, But at what point does someone step in and say that isn't acceptable? And at what point does your coach step in for England and say... You know, these things that we're seeing off the ball, you know, you've got Farrell slapping George North on the back. You know, you've got Sinclair, who's come out and said that he's improved his behaviour, which he has done. And rightly so, because he's a world-class tight head now. Well, that's the thing. You you, you speak about Sinclair. You go back a year, and I said on this podcast, I said, he cost England the game in Cardiff. Right, a year later, he's come out with it, and he said it himself, and everyone... He listened to you. ...chastised me and went, oh, no, he he had an amazing game. That's very true, actually. That, that's that's a, re- and you know what? I saw that today. I saw that in an article t- today where, in his words, he he felt that after that he needed to change his behaviour. And he has, and he has. He's and been brilliant. We, we might beg to differ on the Joe Marler situation that we talk about, but the, like you said, the tweet that you put out and the world that we live in, you took a lot of shit for that. Yeah, and. You know, you live by the sword and you die by yeah, yeah. the and that, sword. And, that's the thing. and now you look at the way Carl Sinclair's handling himself now and he's still a brilliant player. There's none of the other business that's going on with it. So we haven't talked about that for ages. And you said you used to say about Carl Sinclair, he best be hard, you know, because of the way he's acting. Now look at Joe Marler. So Joe Marler has gone the complete other way and he's doing it all for attention. He's doing it to get uh, profile. noticed and profile. And that's okay, but there's there's clearly a line. So he did it the other week against Sale, didn't he? he elbowed um, one of the Dupree boys, didn't he? Or, yeah. or pushed him or, or in the face, whatever. And he's trying to like be this lad on the field where you're courting a bit of controversy and trying to be funny and everyone to build a media profile like you. He's shouting the, at the ref as well with a long rook. Yeah, the fact well. is you're a rugby player. So what you're doing now is, it's obviously different to what Carl Sinclair was doing but it, it's still having a negative impact on, on you as a rugby player. And like Guzzi went mad at him a couple of weeks ago when he, they played Sale. He gets yellow carded, game changes. Uh, they get hosed in the end away from home, didn't they, against Sale? And part of that was the discipline and that. And then he's he's still doing stuff at Twickenham. Grabbing, grabbing someone's genitals, I don't care whether you say it's a work environment or not. 
doing that in front of millions of people on TV when and people go, oh, yeah, the extra boys do it to each other. You're doing it to an opposition player. And Alan Jones, I thought, summed it up perfectly. If you'd have punched him in the face and Alan Jones gets sent off and then, you know, you sat there going, should Joe Marlowe have been sent off? But to act like that on the grand stage that is the Six Nations on TV, millions of people, millions of kids, and everyone goes, rugby banter, rugby banter, lad banter. I, I, I think it's ridiculous. Looking at that... Um incident with Joe Marler and Alan Wynne-Jones what was your first initial reaction because I know you've all had time to think about it now and you're like it's wrong it could be a 12 week ban what was your first initial reaction I laughed and that probably sums me up doesn't it <laughs> I, I don't know what you know this is the thing I can only I'd be lying if I said to you I didn't find it funny so people who say how you can find that funny is ridiculous that's your opinion, and this is the conversation that me and Goody have on the podcast, that me and Goody have away from the podcast, and we talk about people's opinions on anything, on the way that we live our life, on the way, way that you bring up your children, on what you think is right, what you think is wrong, what you think is normal. You're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. This is, the unfortunately, the world that we live in now, or fortunately, for the, for the better, and there's talk of it being sexual assault. He hasn't, he's not sexually assaulted anyone. That's... I think a ridiculous thing to say. If he sexually assaulted someone, then Manu's attempted to murder someone on the pitch. You're on a rugby pitch. It's a very different place. But I also understand, and I've been in this situation before. So, you know, for example, if, you know, me and Goody were playing, maybe it's the time that we played. And, you know, I flick one of your udders up or something like that. <laughs> on a, you probably would have got away with it. I think it's the time now that we live in. I think this is the point of, of everything is I'm laughing about it, but... The point is, the point in time that we live in is it's just something that you seem to can't do and it's banter, all right? And people want to get away from lad banter or whatever. Yes, the Exeter players do it amongst themselves and stuff like that and, you know, we laugh about it. But I think the fact that it is Joe Marler and he's trying to build this persona away from it, the game is on national TV and we spoke about the viewership when we were chatting about the paywall stuff that millions of people would have been watching that and it's naturally going to come into question I don't think he'll get a 12 week ban I think he, he'll get something uh, I, I don't think because he the 12 week ban around it is when you grab someone's genitals right and you do it probably in malice he's done it because he thinks he's being funny it doesn't say in malice at all in, in the laws it doesn't say in malice so the laws are there and you know my take on it is yeah you, know, you look at it I'm like what what why do that no one else in the world is doing that whether on a rugby field or off the field that's the thing no one else will do that yeah and and, and that's the thing you've said there's three things that you would never adhere to or would ever think's acceptable on a rugby field what are those three things yeah i said gouging biting and grabbing grabbing the old boys all right but um, the thing like and this is the thing a lot of people are saying to me oh you, you know you've done stuff on it I never, never flex anyone's old boy. But and then they say, but yeah, but you're talking about them on your podcast. Well, you don't have to listen to our podcast. You can listen to it if you want. And we're clearly jesting about it. It's a big th difference, I think. You know, in doing that, yeah. and I'm going to say that. Yeah. But, but I was like you as well, Jim. Initially, like I sniggered. To me, like I had a bit of a cackle, and I thought, like to me, when I see something like that, that is like when you're sitting in a room and somebody farts. Do you know what I mean? The, the child that's in me. Not at all. Just, but the child in me. Different. No, but that's what he thought initially. That's that what my, the, the child in me just thought, you know, had a, had a bit of a laugh. You know, as time's gone on, yeah, I think it's a very, very tough issue for world rugby, actually, because it is a massive stage. And do you want to say, I, I don't think world rugby can say that that is okay. I think they have to. But... The child in me laughed at the start, you know, so as you said, Jim, have I kind of changed my viewpoint? Maybe, you know, I, I think that I don't think that you can stand behind that world rugby and go, we are happy that that is the game. Uh, we are happy for kids learning values, honesty through rugby, that it's yeah. OK to do that. Um, so th they have to act. But, uh, you know, if I'm being totally honest, like uh, at the start, I kind of had a bit of a chuckle. But that's the where we've come from I think and that's where times are changing and we can only go based on our experiences right and I tweeted then I took it down I used to go train every day and I'd be in the change room with my top off I could barely touch my knees and Ashley would kick open the door and say here he is he used to call me Brendan you look like a bag of sick every single day and 
even now I'm not bothered. I find it hilarious. But now with everything that's going on in the world, is is that play on? I couldn't give a shit if he said that to me every day for the rest of my life. Genuinely, and I'm saying that I couldn't give a shit if Joe Marley goes around flicking people with bollocks. I'm not bothered either way. My point is being now is the fact that we're here talking about it and we've got a platform to talk about it and pass our opinion is why we're now judging it. But just going back to your point again, it's, it's where, where we're from, isn't it? In terms of time in life. And you go back years and years ago, the stuff that was play on that is clearly not play on now. And what, that's why I said, what a time to be alive.